You're listening to The Kylo Show, a podcast about how to keep your love on no matter what and why whole healthy families are going to save the world. In this week's episode, Danny and Brittany are talking about Kylo principle number five, healthy boundaries. A healthy boundary keeps in your life what you want to keep in and keeps out what you want to keep out. When you make the powerful choice in a relationship to say yes, you're essentially saying no to other things. So boundaries really are about honoring and protecting our yes. And Danny and Brittany are going to unpack that thought further in this week's episode starting right now. Well, welcome to the Kylo Show. We're excited to be back. We we are are here talking about fun things. Back for more. Yes. Yes. But today I feel like our topic is what we get asked the most around, which is boundaries. What do we do with the scary people? Pretty much in a nutshell. But yeah, so we're going to dive into boundaries and just talk about it and then get to our questions and stuff later. But um, this is the last principle that we have in the five that we've been covering beforehand. Mm-hmm. So we saved the best for last for you. This is <laughs> the commonly most asked question. You know, we every time we do a conference or open things up for questions, people start out with, yes. well, what, am I, what do I do when my mom is really mean or scary? What do I do when people won't be respectful or responsible? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And it's like, okay, well, that's a great question. It's a great uh, dilemma. My favorite, though, is usually when you say, if you're going to ask a boundary question, we haven't talked about it yet, yes. we will, but yeah. they still ask boundary yeah, questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's usually in the middle of the day. <laughs> yeah. We're going to get to boundaries. We always go connection, communication, boundaries, and five yeah. first questions are Our boundaries. boundaries. Oh, are you coming back to that? Are you going to be here later? Are you going to be at the last session? So okay, we okay. are going to talk about boundaries for you. Here we are. And it's, and it's last again. I know it yeah. is last, maybe because we know we're just building the anticipation yes, for them. This is like That's a good it. movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty much. Are. Here we are. Finally, we're getting to the good stuff Brum, for you. <laughs> You've waited this long, so I mean, when I think about boundaries, I, I I think that my view of boundaries now is been changed forever because of Kylo and growing mm. up in this home, but. Mm. You know, when I ask the kids about boundaries, they say offense. Mm-hmm. That's usually what they envision or think about. Mm-hmm. And is that safe to say that how most people think of boundaries is they look, they envision uh, a fi- offense? I, I think most people think of boundaries like a moat full of alligators okay. with machine gun towers. Oh. Yeah. I think most people think I set a boundary with that person means that relationship is over. And if they try to violate it, I'm going to execute you. I'm going to (laughs) attack. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's probably a safe bet. I I don't know that people understand fully that boundaries are meant to protect something instead of um, a last resort to keep something out. Yeah. It's, um, I think, in a lot of relationships, it is this extreme measure of the only way to keep myself safe is I have to set a boundary. Not that I love you so much, I'm going to set a boundary. Mm -hmm. And, and, or I have to surround myself with, People who never make mistakes, mm. and if you, um, you know, you break our trust, if you are disrespectful, or even these days, if you disagree, mm. if you disagree, I have permission to cast you into the outer darkness. Which still sounds so pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> the outer darkness. It's so fear driven. Yeah, it's just it's such a reaction to feeling like you have to control another person. Mm -hmm. Ben and I just talked to um, the youth leadership team about boundaries. Mm. And it was so interesting to kind of get their perspective on, you know, what are boundaries? And, you know, they were, they were smart young kids. They were describing it and so fun. It was really fun, but they were talking about um, boundaries are like a limit that you can't cross. Uh And um, so once we got into this conversation with them, but we, we got to, you know, what happens when someone crosses that limit that you set. And they all kind of had this panicked look in their face, like, I don't know what to do. Yep. And I, I feel like that's a pretty normal experience, is what do I do when someone's crossed that limit or or I'm afraid to set a boundary. That was a bigger one. So I'm afraid to set a boundary yeah. because I'm afraid to be punished. Yeah, I'm, I'm afraid to say no. Mm-hmm. Because 
of this person's reaction. Yeah. You know, and that's that's classically how people control other people is they intimidate another person away from that person being honest and and communicating who they are, what they need, and how they're experiencing this interaction. I don't want you to be honest with me. I want you to comply with me. Yeah. And so that intimidation factor rises and people comply. They adjust to avoid the conflict instead of stand courageously and responsibly and say, here's my standard. Here's what I need. What are you going to do Mm -hmm. instead of what do I have to do so that you don't punish me? Yeah, I think it was interesting, even their take on it's our peers that usually um, have the most punishment or pressure. <laughs> right. Peer pressure. It's called peer pressure. Yeah. yeah. And, and so they were just saying how that is what keeps them from feeling powerful, which is such a big part of boundaries is being a powerful person. Yep. Um, but being able to say yes or no. And we talked a lot about the power of your yes and the power of your no mm-hmm. and understanding what you're protecting. Mm-hmm. I gave your example that you always give with the um, the wallet. If I threw my oh, wallet yeah, yeah. Yeah. on the floor, which you could tell because you tell it better than I do. But, you know, it's just <laughs> this idea of, you know, there's something of value when I put it in a safe or I protect it. Boundaries communicate value, mm-hmm. you know, so that wallet accessible to everyone says there's nothing valuable in there. But as soon as you start setting more extreme boundaries around something, people begin to go, what is in that? Mm -hmm. That you would have such an intense boundary over protecting it. And when people don't feel valuable in themselves, in their, their freedom, their security, their truth, their peace, their uh, self-respect, their personal responsibility, when you don't feel like you have momentum and something to cultivate and protect there, mm-hmm. then your boundaries are very weak and and aggressive people smell that, like blood in the water mm-hmm. to the great whites. They're like, coming at you, baby. I'm going to eat up everything that you're offering because you have no strength to set a limit with me. You are refusing to tell me the truth and or manage yourself in this relationship. And so it looks like you left the gate open in the garden. So I'm going to ease my way in there and violate those boundaries. Yeah. And I'm going to consume everything until you chase me out of the garden. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how boundaries are in every relationship that we have. Mm -hmm. It's not just your peers or you know, for friends, it's your marriage, it's your children, it's your, I mean, employers, I mean, all of it. I think, I I don't know that people always um, realize and activate where boundaries need to be in place in some of these relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not unusual for people to think that other people should respect what's important to me and govern themselves. Like I have to surround myself with nice people. I have to surround myself with respectful people. And then when they violate it, I, I, I'm so upset. I'm so shook. I don't know what I'm going to do. And so I just expel them from my life. You're like, wow, that's, that means that the, the real people that can be around you is a very, very small number because most people will not manage themselves to protect your priorities. It's just crazy to think about. I mean, really, what's the message that you're sending is that you're incapable of having depth to your relationship because I don't have any relationships that aren't full of people that are messy and yeah. that are learning or require feedback or, I mean, really, it feels like feedback. I have so many conversations with different people of that didn't feel good, but it doesn't mean you're removed forever. This is how you become an out of control parent is you expect your children Mm. to be respectful and to take care of your priorities, your time, your energy levels, uh, your 
uh, you know, your 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 resources, the things that that uh, you provided. You you think that your kids are going to be a better steward of those things than you're willing to be, mm-hmm. and then when they're not, you're you feel so violated and out of control because you can't seem to control them. Whether you are nice, intimidating, manipulative, whatever it is, All of the above. and eventually you are you sound like a crazy person because you're trying to control the planet. And these kids are learning that I can make you crazy yes, just by being disrespectful. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, on that note of parents, I think, which is not just parents, but, you know, managing yourself, setting boundaries for yourself and following through with what you said you're going to do is probably the first place I think is a hard step. Like I'm going to wake up every day. I'm going to exercise every day until I wake up and go, I don't want to get out of bed. Yeah. You know, telling yourself what you're going to do, what boundaries you're going to set. I'm not going to eat that, or I'm going to read my Bible every day, or I'm going to work on this. I mean, this is where it feels like we are a good indicator of how well are you doing boundaries if you can't even do it around yourself. And this is why you know, the first principle is be a powerful person. Yeah. Because if you're not a powerful person, you're not going to set boundaries. You're going to intimidate, manipulate, Mm -hmm. you know, some, some form of trying to control other people because you're not confidently controlling yourself. You're not confidently telling yourself, be courageous, be honest, take responsibility for yourself right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tell them what you're going to do instead of try to avoid that conflict and manipulate them. Mm-hmm. So that that whole thing of that first piece, you know, be a powerful person sets you up to do the fifth principle, mm-hmm. which is set healthy boundaries. Yeah. Self um self-control and healthy boundaries feel like they kind of go together a mm-hmm. little bit of getting really good at telling yourself what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. And which looks like I'm responsible for my half of the relationship. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, if I don't communicate with Ben when I when something that's happened or there's a boundary that was crossed or or even my children or, you know, we all live in the same house together. If I'm not communicating with you, then I am building a case against you secretly in my heart. And mm-hmm. then usually it erupts and doesn't go well. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it feels like boundaries are just such an, a crucial element to doing relationships well Mm -hmm. but the first step really comes from managing my half of it boundaries classically are setting people up to build trust in the relationship Mm -hmm. because they're they're the exchange of truth like let me communicate with you truth Mm -hmm. how i am experiencing you yeah. Now it doesn't mean that I I'm I'm in control of you. I, it doesn't even mean you're in control of you. It just means that you now have really great information because I said I feel run over. I feel hurt right here. Mm-hmm. I need to feel safe. Yeah. Here's what I'm gonna do with me until I am feeling safe, until I am feeling powerful, until I am feeling respected. Here's what I'm gonna be doing with me. Mm-hmm. I have no idea what's going to happen over there with you. Yeah. Let me know. Mm-hmm. Show me. Convince me. And the, the practice of boundaries long term is the the art and the practice of respect. Yeah. You know, I, I value what mm-hmm. I see that you need. Yeah. I will manage me to protect that, to provide that, and be vulnerable, let you see me while we go through this whole thing Mm -hmm. growing and changing. Um, And and sometimes it's a quick process and sometimes it's really slow. (laughs) Yeah. I do love that boundaries really, I think the heart of it is I'm protecting something of value so that I can lean into this relationship and, and bring something of value. Because if I don't protect this thing in my heart, the needs that I have, then I everyone has access to it and there's just nothing of worth anymore. And so it just breaks down, breaks down, breaks down. Mm -hmm. So really the exchange of creating boundaries. I mean, I think about our kids and growing culture and, you know, setting a boundary of what I will and what I 
I'm not okay with you watching or listening to or being around is, is to protect you and at a place of us growing together in your culture and, and you nurturing something. And the same thing for Ben and I and our disrespect, like that doesn't get to have a space here. And it's because of a boundary that's rooted in a healthy place to grow that trust. I mm-hmm. love that that was your take. It was so good. Mm-hmm. So cool. boundaries are good. They're good. So let's, uh, let's go to speak pipe. Okay, let's yeah. add, do some questions, yeah. which is what everyone loves. So let's dive in. Here we go. Teaching and training people in connection, communication, and healthy boundaries is what we do at Loving on Purpose. And you can help by becoming a Life Academy facilitator. A Life Academy facilitator helps others around them go from hopeless and disconnected to relationship rock star status. So, if you want to become a facilitator, go to LOP Life Academy, that's L-O-P lifeacademy.com and click lead a class. All right, now back to Danny and Britt as they answer your question. Okay, so we have our first question oh, on good. boundaries. It comes from Katie Ann from Idaho. What? Hi, I'm wondering if you could explain the difference between a healthy powerful boundary and a self-protecting ultimatum. Sometimes I feel like people slap a boundary sticker on what is actually self-protection in an ultimatum. How would you help someone to see the difference? Great question. Mm -hmm. And there's the moat with the guard towers. Mm -hmm. Uh, It is not unusual to have someone just react in pain or fear Mm -hmm. when they get hurt and or feel powerless over the other person's actions coming at them. Mm -hmm. So the raw is some sort of an attempt to look and feel powerful, but the goal really is to control the other person. Yeah. So I'm going to make you back up. I'm going to make you stay away. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to take away all your power Mm -hmm. in the relationship by saying, I, you know, I don't, I think we need to change the, the way our relationship functions. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want you texting me. I don't want you calling me. I don't want you coming over anymore. And and we begin, you know, we begin to instruct them Mm -hmm. on what they can and cannot do. Yeah. Instead of saying, Hey, wow, I feel really disconnected from you. And I feel scared about another conversation because they get so disrespectful and hurtful. So I won't be answering your calls or your texts until we get this worked out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. I think it really is, um, you know, what's the goal? Like you said, what's Mm -hmm. the goal of this? Is it's to, you know, really manipulate control or is it to restore and bring hope in the relationship? Absolutely. So often a a boundary is is a rejection message. Mm -hmm. And like, I reject you and there's nothing you can do about it. Right. You are powerless now. Mm-hmm. That you have failed, that you've scared me, that you've hurt me, you are powerless. Mm-hmm. And I hold you in powerless prison yeah. until I feel guilty or I forget about it or never. Mm-hmm. I hold you there forever. Yeah. And instead of it being a place where there's hope to reconcile, yeah. you're still powerful over there, but you have a big old mess to clean mm-hmm. up. So until you address cleaning up that mess to a level where I actually believe you, because mm-hmm. maybe this is round three mm-hmm. or 23. You're right. And you're like, I don't believe you when you say, hey, I had this, I'm going to do that. I'm sorry. I, you know, I shouldn't have done X, Y, and Z. I, you know, I, I shouldn't have done all that damage again. Mm-hmm. Like, right? Okay. We can, we clearly <laughs> agree about that. Yeah. But the person doesn't have a character change, doesn't have any accountability and or accountability that's working Mm -hmm. like some people will you know apologize for this thing that they're doing repeatedly say that they are accountable like i got this group of guys that have the same problem as i have so when i call them we commiserate there's my accountability like no no that's not that's your justification group Mm -hmm. nothing's changing exactly so Yep. Good question. Mm -hmm. Katie Ann had a great question. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for that. So it has everything to do with 
uh, deciding between the the move of rejection or the move of reconciliation. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, not not like we're gonna like if a couple breaks up, mm-hmm. you know, we were dating, yeah, and then it got weird somehow, and we're not dating anymore. It doesn't mean. I never see you. I never talk to you. And anytime I think of you, I hope that you're suffering somewhere. (laughs) And if I ever talk about you, I bring up all the junk. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, no, the, the, the breakup is about adjusting the level of access that you have to my life. There's a boundary there. And so now you are way out there with all those other strangers walking down the sidewalk. I wave, hi, I I recognize your face, but you have no access to my time, energy, resources, uh, future. Yeah. You know, you, you're just, you're just a face out there that I'm friendly towards, Mm -hmm. but I, I don't have to put you in prison to deal with, our relationship. Yeah. Which I think the boundary circles that you have in uh keep your love on are a great analogy mm, and yes, visual there, for that. So they are there's kind of a hierarchy of access. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is awesome. All right. Well, we got another question. Oh, good. This is from Rusty from Louisiana. Rusty. When does a boundary cross the line over into being punishment? Another way to put it might be when do you know when a boundary moves into being punitive and a way to feel more in control? Yep, that's a similar. Very similar question. Yeah, and I, we probably should answer this question 15 times because <laughs> this is exactly what happens. Yeah, is over and over again. I use the boundary as a punishment mm-hmm. instead of as a relationship builder. Mm-hmm. But it, it it's so frustrating when a person continually fails in the same area Mm -hmm. this is when you know you start to lose hope yourself it it happens classically with parenting Mm -hmm. that this child keeps doing this thing yeah and so we've now have these what feel like ridiculous boundaries around this particular behavior because I know that you're going to keep doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. This is, you know, today it's all this technology parenting yeah. stuff that every time you get near your phone, you you, you get crazy. Yeah. I don't even know what to say, but mm-hmm. here we go. Hey, you know, this is like heroin or something. Like, okay, how much heroin can they handle? None. <laughs> well, when can they finally handle heroin? Never. Like, well, how would, you know, what realistic parenting can I do around this thing that you keep using to blow up our relationship? Mm -hmm. Why would I give you more access to this thing that I know you're going to do to hurt us? Yeah. I think that, you know, the Rusty and Katie Ann's question are similar in that I've, I think that I've experienced people that are trying to learn how to set a boundary They use the language, so it sounds like it's maybe going to be for connection, but the experience is control and distance. It's over. Yeah. It's over. So I think that, you know, as you learn boundaries and you're implementing these tools, you know, what's a good check system for someone that's like maybe has old ways of doing it? Because like they get in these habits of this is how we do this. Probably check when was the last time you communicated that you loved this person to them? That you're creating the boundary with. Yeah. Uh, mom, uh-huh. wow, dang. The mm-hmm. way you treated my husband was beyond okay. Mm-hmm. That was crazy. So you know what? You can come over or you can call again or we can we can move ahead as a family unit after you get that message or that mess cleaned up. Uh-huh. And she's like, wah, 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 wah. and I'm like, finally, okay, well, this could take for a long time. I don't uh-huh. care. I don't care as long as it takes. I don't even care how long this takes. And you settle into punishment mm. because she didn't do what you wanted her to do. Yeah. So you have to keep going back to, I love you. I miss you. I hope to see you. 
Hope to talk to you. Let me know when you're ready. On the other side of this whole deal. And so you're cultivating in your own heart hope Mm. and an expectation. And so you you know, you're you're keeping it open. The boundary stays there. Mm -hmm. Mom's over there going, after after all I've done for you, this is how you're gonna treat me. You're like, probably so, mom. I love you. I really, I really am looking forward to all this getting cleaned up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's really great just to pull apart the the pursuit of communicating love mm-hmm. and value, which really is, I'm, I'm going as close as I can to the edge of the castle to, to shout down to you that are on the other side of the moat. I love you. I would, you know, but you've got this message that you're trying to say. You know, I long for this relationship to be restored. Doesn't mean I'm gonna. I I have a tr- full trust ready to open up, but I I want this. The. The difficult part is that most people mm-hmm. use anger yeah. to set a boundary. Yes. They normally are hurt and scared and they go, rah. Yeah. It's a slap I'm in the so face. Sick and tired. Yeah. Rocka, 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 rocka. And then they're scared to let it go. Yeah. I'm scared to let my anger go because that's how I set that boundary. Yeah. And if I was nice, if all of a sudden I was loving, <laughs> I was Christ-like all of a sudden, that boundary goes away. Mm-hmm. And now I'm afraid of being bum-rushed again mm-hmm. because I gave them the message that there was no hordes of hell keeping the boundary in place. Yeah. I had a conversation just with Addy and Lincoln uh, the other day about... Uh, Lincoln wasn't stopping, he wasn't listening to Addie's no. Mm. And so the only way was if Addie yelled mm. at him, mm. which he then is like, she's being mean. Mm. And so just navigating to him, like, how well are you listening to what oh, she's trying to communicate that she's not, she's not having fun. She's trying to say no, but you're not listening. And Addie's, you know, why are you getting, the only way that you feel powerful is to get mean. You know, what's going on there? What other options do you have to set a boundary with your brother? So, I mean, I'm trying to teach them this at totally. 11 and 9. So it's just a, the same thing of that anger that wants to rise out as what feels powerful is a big... And, and anger is fake power. Yeah. And we get sucked into this because we think that we can get the planet to adjust mm-hmm. if we get disrespectful enough. Right. If we get intense enough. Mm-hmm. And you don't want your relationships to function on I feel respected when I'm right after I'm screaming at you. Right. Like, okay, that's that's a dumb pattern. Mm-hmm. And you're gonna regret this mm-hmm. even though it feels like it's working. Right. Which the world seems to be full of disrespect and I don't know that anyone's listening very well. Yeah. So maybe yeah. try a different tactic. Yeah. And it's because the world's trying to control each mm-hmm. other instead of themselves. Yeah. Very true. All right. Next question comes from Audrey from California. Hi, Audrey. What are some ways to set healthy boundaries in a relationship that seems to be creating more fear and anxiety than love? I think that, I mean, it really is the being able to not have to set a boundary in that anger state, Mm -hmm. like really leaning into, um, I think, we get so much anxiety when I have to set a boundary that it's like, <laughs> okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And then it comes out as this roar when it's that is not necessary. If I can simply just lean in and say, hey, I'm not sure what you're needing, but this exchange is really painful. And when you're ready to talk about it and be nice and talk calmly, we can revisit it. I'm going to go ahead and get off the phone. Mm. You know, I think being able to have an assertive way of communicating is going to set you up for success because you get to walk away from that feeling great. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the hook is that that anger wants to set in and that aggression and that, you know, mean, scary dragon or the passive aggressive Mm -hmm. um, thing. But if you can stay in a place of being assertive and leading in love, and my goal is to have connection with you, but I'm not going to do it like this, that is probably the best way to lean in but it is it's it's really hard when 
there's a lot of emotions flying on in, in a conversation and in an exchange, you've got this, um, just there's, I mean, anytime you have a, a heated conversation, I feel like you've, your adrenaline that your amygdala is mm-hmm. just raging Juiced. and to stay in control of yourself is step one. Mm-hmm. And then your ability to navigate. Uh, I mean, I'm often thinking, Brittany, get off the phone, get off the phone, Brittany, Brittany, get off the phone, get off the phone as fast as you can right now, get off the phone before you let your amygdala go crazy. Mm-hmm. And now I have a mess to clean up. Mm-hmm. So that's for me, usually where I'm trying to sit is I need to manage myself and I know that I have a shorter fuse. And if I don't, then I'm going to end up cleaning up a mess on top of this nasty problem that Mm. I've just been faced with. Totally. So. Totally. Well, after the break, why don't we uh, talk a little bit about, um, you know, just don't make a bigger mess than the one you're trying to clean up. (laughs) Yeah. And I think we have some testimonies or at least one for boundaries as well. So giving us some hope, we're going to do it well. Awesome. All good things. Before we get to that testimony, I want to tell you one more really awesome thing about being a Life Academy facilitator. That is, it's completely free. And everything you need to start and lead a class is free as well. You get access to the course that you're going to lead, the facilitator guide, You get pre-built emails and social media posts to send your friends, family, or church congregation. And you get exclusive training videos to teach you how to lead a class excellently. It's all right there for you in the facilitator dashboard. So getting started as a Life Academy facilitator is as easy as one, two, three. You're going to first go to loplifeacademy.com. That's L-O-P, lifeacademy.com. Second, you're going to click lead a class in the upper right hand corner. And last but not least, you're going to submit the facilitator form. And that's going to come right to us and we're going to help you set up an account so that you can start leading a class in your area. Okay, so we're going to dive into a testimony, Mm -hmm. um, give some hope to doing boundaries well. Awesome. Um, I think it's just such a a muscle that you've got to exercise and get used to. So, um, but we have a fun testimony that comes from Carla. Oh. In Alaska. Wow. So I've been in pastoral ministry for a number of years, which means often working with people who are struggling or who come from difficult life situations. And I found myself in a situation working with a lady who really needed a lot of help. She'd had a really hard life and was struggling in a lot of areas. And so what that meant was... Um, often being on call when she would call because she was going through a hard situation, often ending up going over to her house to help her pray through specifically different things, sometimes even um, watching her children when she just needed to get away and get a break. But the thing that started happening over time was really because I, I, I made myself on call, it just seemed like that the level of need was increasing, increasing, increasing. And I felt good because I felt it was really helping her. But what started happening was my husband started to struggle and he was starting to, you know, if I'm with him and I'm on a date and I'm answering the phone and then I'm leaving for to take a call for 30 minutes or late at night, I'm rushing out to go to my friend's house. And we started having real conflict over my level of involvement in her life. And the real struggle that it started to cause was between what, I felt like I was doing right because I was loving people well. And when you love people well, you give your life away. And so what I felt like my ministry was and my commitment to Jesus was now coming into conflict with my marriage and with my husband. And because of like that whole attachment of this is what I was called, feeling like it was what I was called to do and I wasn't making adjustments when my husband was saying, hey, I was struggling, it was actually causing increasing pressure in our marriage. And it it wasn't actually until I I went through Keep Your Love On and I began to understand boundaries and Danny taught about my boundaries really direct my resources and direct my resources 
first and foremost who the most important people in my life was that I actually realized that I didn't have the boundaries in place that were protecting my marriage. And I was giving things away that belonged as priority to my husband and to my children than to other people, even if it was my ministry. And it really was a really major point of understanding for me that to understand that first and foremost, I needed to put boundaries around my time and my availability because of what belonged to my husband and my family. And understanding that really did result in me to having to put in some really hard boundaries and just say, actually, I can only be available from this time and this time. Actually, I cannot always be on call. I'm sorry. I am away this weekend with my husband and I cannot be available to take your children, which actually ended up putting real strain on that relationship. It, it actually was really difficult to reset boundaries that I hadn't put in place in the first place. But what it really did was bring a partnership in our marriage when my husband actually learned through the demonstration of my actions that I will manage myself to protect his and my relationship first. And I will not give the things that belong like priority that belongs to him away to other people, which really then resulted in us being partners in ministry him championing what my call was because at the same time he felt protected in terms of priority and my time. Beautiful. Yeah. I was laughing just thinking about early days of marriage with Ben. (laughs) (laughs) And we had a very similar situation with a youth kid because we were in youth leadership and sweet kid, really broken home. And um, he would always call Ben at like 10 o'clock at night Mm. and we both, he was in, Ben was in school and I was working. So, and we were newly married. And so it was like Ben disappeared. And it, unlike Carla, I think he was on the phone for like an hour plus mm-hmm. every time. But I was just laughing, thinking about finally having the conversation with Ben of, I'm not sure what you're going to do, but I am having no fun when he calls. And so Ben set a boundary with him saying, I'm available to you until 8 p.m. Mm. And then I'm not answering my phone. Mm. And I think that was a big boundary back then for Ben. Yeah, it um, sure was. Early days. But man, it, it really did change so much moving forward for us and spoke volumes to me as a priority, which is exactly what Carla was talking about. This always reminds me of Reagan. You know, Reagan <laughs> okay. is our golden retriever. Uh-huh. And she is just the gentlest dog, wants to please, oh, yes. is just so just so friendly and 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 available and if reagan comes up to a door that's like <laughs> two inches open but not open big enough for her to go through her whole body she'll stop at it mm-hmm. she'll just stop at that door and whine she like does. all she'd have to do is like take a step and that door would open yeah. but she'll just stand there and look at it like um um i don't want to hurt anything <laughs> I don't want to be demanding right now, but um, because somebody opened this door, please give me permission. And yeah, I love that about her. But at the same time, I'm like, yes, seriously, like you're not gonna just pr- gently. It's even going in the direction which she's going yeah. normally. She's, <laughs> she just has she's to... you know she's seventy pounds. She could just push it, and she mm. just kind of waits. Well, I'll just wait till somebody gives me permission to do that thing, and that's. Oftentimes, setting a boundary is, I wish you would be more self-aware. Mm-hmm. I wish you would be more respectful of my time. I I kind of tried to tell you, this is a giant sacrifice. I'm missing my daughter's birthday party mm-hmm. because you won't hang up. Mm. Yeah. Like, wait a second here. When did it become someone else's job to give you permission to take care of your priorities yeah and that is you know carla's journey really because it's it's tough when you think you're doing a great job you know i'm saving the world here i'm available i'm way more available than anybody else this person's life is terrible because they have no resources i will be those resources yeah yeah and it feels compassionate it feels it even feels like you know god is 
God's up there just applauding you. Mm-hmm. you know, wow, good job. You're so you're so sacrificial. You have <laughs> sacrificed your family, your marriage, your children for that person. Yeah. Congratulations. And like, yeah, that's the wrong order. Yeah. And your fear of saying no, your fear of being accused of of being the bad guy or yeah. the the selfish minister. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's that's what's keeping you from protecting what is a priority. Mm-hmm. And you would get to see Jesus, you know, he is about his father's business. Mm-hmm. So he has a priority. Yeah. It, it, he has a yes yeah. that says no to everything else. So mm-hmm. when he is on his way to his yes, you know, the, the Bible talks about in Luke 8 where Jesus is passing through a crowd yeah. because he said he was going to go heal this little girl. Mm-hmm. And the whole crowd was grabbing onto him and saying, I need healing. Yeah. I need a miracle. Mm-hmm. I need something from you. And the Bible says that they were pressing against him so hard, he would, they were suffocating him. And he is passing through that group that mm-hmm. needs stuff because he said yes already. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, people are, you know... They up, forget up. that story, I feel like, sometimes. Well, they don't read it that way. Yeah, no. The, people don't read Jesus like Jesus is. People read Jesus like they are. Hmm. And like, wow, Jesus said no or asked very unusual questions. Like, um, you know, blind Bartimaeus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jesus comes into the city and blind Bartimaeus is there, right? And... <laughs> you know, he's he's like, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And his friends are like, Shh, hey, Jesus is busy. He's got more to do than <laughs> blind people. And Jesus hears him and says, bring him over here. You know, bring him over here. Mm-hmm. So they bring him over and they set blind Bartimaeus in front of Jesus. Now, blind Bartimaeus is so blind, his first name is blind, right? <laughs> Okay, that, you have been identified as you're blind, blind. Bartimaeus. <laughs> they set him down, and Jesus says, "What is it that you want?" Mm-hmm. And now, <laughs> it's nice to meet you, blind Bartimaeus. Bart, yeah, <laughs> what do you Bart's got to be kind of, <laughs> kind of looking around like, "Hey, um, did he miss the first part of my name? Is Jesus blind too? I yeah. mean, how, who, who has ever said to me, <laughs> what do you think I want?' Yeah, but it's because Jesus knows." He can only go up to Bart's life mm-hmm. and stop yeah. out of respect for that boundary and say, what is it that you want? Mm-hmm. My sight, Lord. Okay, here you go. Mm-hmm. That exchange is a, a message of intense respect for Bart. Mm-hmm. But we think that, man, I got a solution. You got a problem. I have got, I'm, I'm in control. Here you go. You get what I got. This is another mistake that we make in in marriage. Yeah. Like, oh, look at you and all the problems you have. Here, let me tell you what to do. Yeah. Let me know how that works out for you because it isn't going to work out for you. Same with parenting. Same with any, you know, I mean, some friends are, yeah, they're just hard to be around because they see that you have a problem and they are going to jump up and down on you until you let them control you. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, back away. And so we have to manage ourselves and all our really great wisdom and solutions in the presence of somebody who has a problem. And and boundaries is actually another very effective way of helping people Mm -hmm. is waiting until that person has a problem. Mm -hmm. Because I can't work harder on your life than you do. Right. Which, you know... um there's this funny little video going around that is this this lamb that it's fallen into like this ditch. Yeah, this yeah. crevice that is just wedged <laughs> enough that like one leg's sticking out of exactly. it. So these people are trying to free it. They are pulling, pulling, pulling its leg and they get him out and he goes hopping across into this green pasture and it's hopping, hopping and tries to jump over the ditch that was just in, but he's a little far behind and he goes... Right back, back in, in. Right, back right back in, in the yeah. ditch. Yeah, and you know the the idea that you cannot work harder on someone else's problem than they're willing to work yeah. is, I mean, this is 
as a dog returns to its vomit, I mean, hello, they yeah. just going right back to the same problem because they've never had a problem. I worked so hard to get you out of your addiction yeah. and accountable. Yes. And I removed you from the uh, accessing your 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 drug of choice. Mm-hmm. I, I kept you isolated in this place. I I created this intense structure. I brought these these really uh, these consequences that really worked. We mm-hmm. did this for three months, six months with you, yeah. and then you got access to that stuff again, and you went right back into it. And often that is the case when I am working so hard on your problem Mm -hmm. and you haven't really ever addressed your problem. Yeah, which I think is part of the the hook for people in ministry or that work with people a lot or have high value for wanting to work with people is that we just dive in and don't realize that, you know, we are violating boundaries and call it, you know, good intentions. Mm -hmm. And just like Jesus, he walks up to you know this line and says well what do you want mm-hmm. instead of just doing it yeah like the guy at the at the pool that when the when the you know all these sick people are waiting around for the angels to trouble the water so that they can go get in the water and get healed and jesus walks up to this guy he's been laying there for 18 years or something and says do you want to be made well and it's like, well, duh, I'm laying here by this this pond. What do you think, Forever. you know? And it's like, no, it's not always as clear as you are trying to make it look. Because mm-hmm. oftentimes uh, you don't want to do what is required to make the change. And mm-hmm. you're kind of identified as in your shame or in your uh, your your self preservation you're 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 identified as lame as sick Mm -hmm. as a problem as whatever and this is how you get lots of your needs met Mm -hmm. staying that victim is being that victim yeah well we could talk about this forever i feel like i'm sure we'll talk about it we will we will so i mean we've finished our five principles so just to review those it's you know what does it mean to be powerful powerful people love over fear that, there's a battle there nonstop. Uh huh. The goal of connection. It, that's my goal, uh-huh. and nobody can change it. Communication. Be respectful. Lower the anxiety. And then boundaries. Yeah, and protect your yes. Yes. So those are the five principles that we've been covering, and we'll continue to cover those in different ways and mm-hmm. different topics and fun things. Um, but again, so don't worry. We'll get back to those one of those topics at some point in time, and we'll display them in a beautiful way with lots of questions and testimonies. But thanks so much for joining us. Um, And just remember that whole healthy families are going to save the world. And you are part of that. So we are here to champion you and see that through. And thanks so much for joining us on The Kylo Show. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. Join us next week when Danny and Brittany unpack a new series about applying the five Kylo principles to your parenting. And even if you're not a parent, you're going to want to listen because it's going to be incredibly helpful. Never miss an episode by subscribing to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or watch us on the Loving on Purpose YouTube channel. The Kylo Show was produced by Ali Armiting, co-produced by Ashley Beck, Leah Alexander, Anna Hill, and Sherry Silk, sound engineer and edited by Taylor Silk, and show promoter Christian Zamora. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week.